Hey, Ron T Media here, kicking it. NBA Draft 2023. This is how it goes down. New Orleans Pelicans has the 14th pick. As of now, they may trade up, they may trade down. You never know what's going to happen. What will Zion do? Will he play this year? Will he be moved? We do not know. However, the Birmingham squadron is here to develop players and make sure when they get caught up, they are ready. This is Ron T. Holla. I'm a squadron fan, I'm a Pelicans fan. I, I, I think a lot of people. <laughs> <laughs> hey, we gotta get scooped! <laughs> Hello, how you doing? My name is Roger Gabernath, and I am here with the Birmingham Squadron, NBA affiliate of New Orleans Pelicans coach. How are you doing today? I'm good. Excited to be back in Birmingham for this big event. Uh, see what happens with the Pelicans, which obviously affects us. Coach, now nah, it's, it's another historic run. We're getting ready to do some great things. Um, how are you feeling about this season? Very optimistic. I like the guys we've talked to, um, their character, their skill set. Some guys who played on our team last year are eager to come back. So I think the group blending together is looking pretty good right now. What are some of the great things that, um, from this past season that you can take and implement to this upcoming season? Well, um, right now, Darion Sebron, our point guard, will be back. So he's had a year under his belt. He's one of the best players in the G League, and we know what works with him and trying to get him beyond the two-way contract into the NBA with the Pelicans is paramount, and that's what I'm here to do. Coach, now you had some time off, but does your mind actually turn off? <laughs> it does not. Uh, my family doesn't like that about me, but you get a little time, but, I mean, you're always thinking, you're always tweaking. Um, looking at different things on film and talking to different coaches. So, no, to answer your question. Right. So, we're here, uh, NBA draft, um, pick 14, correct? As of right now, as yes. As of right now, before you never know, slide up, move back, whatever happens. So, we had a brief conversation, and you said your strategy from the G League aspect, you are looking at the second round? Yeah, so once the second round hits, I'm going to be watching that even more because the guys who are going to come to us are going to be undrafted unless they're sent down by the Pelicans. Um, so looking for guys who go undrafted that we've kind of targeted to get to our team is when I'm going to get kind of nervous. Okay. Once the second round's over, I'll probably feel better and we'll go after the guys we want. Coach, now I, I was at home and I was just going, just going through my mind. Do you all like campaign for your player to get called up even though – they're doing so great for you all. Like, how is that to balance? You know, hey, I want to win. You know, you want to win as a coach. But you also want them to get called up. How does that work? Yeah, so the the main reason for them to be down here is to fulfill their NBA dream. So we would never sacrifice a couple wins if a guy can get called up. We're always talking to different front office people, coaches around the league, trying to help our guys get called up. So to answer your question, yeah, it's all about the players first. So, yeah, I know sometimes, you know, players get in the groove and you're like, oh, man, we, we're like 11. A little bit, yeah, I get you. <laughs> exactly. But the most intriguing thing that I like about it is it's really like a reality show. These guys can caught up any minute, and that night they're on the flight and they're gone. Right. So do you uh, ha – has a guy ever traveled to a team and then, like, called you back for advice while he was on the, the NBA team? Uh, not really, but I do remember last year, Sebron, Darian Sebron, he was sent to us for the first time. He practiced for about 20 minutes, okay. and then they called him back. So I just called the team together. I was like, Darian, you had the best practice ever because you're getting called back up in 20 minutes. So good job, man. Great job. Great job. I'll say the job. Let's talk about these the gentlemen that score like 25, 30 points, and then they're, you know, pulled into a new role, you know, obviously with Zion Williams and, you know, so on and so yep. forth. Break that down of the mindset that they must have in understanding their role. Yeah, so a lot of guys from high school to college, they've been the man. Okay, they've averaged 20, 25, whatever the case may be. Even if they're here, they can do that. Right. They have a down game they scoring. They feel like their chances to make the NBA are hurt but they're really not. We're looking at their efficiency because if they get called up by, say, our team, the New Orleans Pelicans, C.J. McCollum, Zion Williamson, Brandon Ingram, those guys are paid to score. Yes, you are going there to support and fill a role for them. And so if you can do that at this level, it doesn't matter how much you average. It's your efficiency, your mindset. That's what we're looking for. And it's kind of easy to talk to them, keep them level-headed. Um, but that's a struggle that we have. That's with every G League player. When, when the guys get drafted or enter the, uh, the, the, just the whole tour of going you know, from here and there, um, do they find out what type of player they are, like the role that they would be 
for the Pelicans or for the NBA? And if so, how do they get a chance to work on that? Well, that's that's part of my job okay. is to define their role as oh. far as from our front office and what we need them to do. So that's wow. something that I have to hit them on, remind them about. You're here to do this. This is going to give you the best chance. So that's that's really on me okay. as the coach. Okay. Okay. Yeah. And do <laughs> is it hard for them to just uh, like take it? You know, a lot of times we tell the truth to some people. Mm -hmm. Hey, listen, you're not you're not a forward. You yes. know, or you're not a point guard. Yeah. You you're not a what is it? What, what's the new term off for the center and the point guard? What they call Jokic, point, point, point center. Yeah, point center. Point center. When you try to explain to them that it's not that, how do you work it out? It's it's difficult sometimes. Um, you really just kind of keep hammering home on them, um, and you got to they got to realize that NBA front offices scouts are looking at their demeanor, so they kind of just have to fit in and fill the role. It, it's it's difficult, but the ones who have the mental makeup can make it. Coach, well, I appreciate it so much. As you see, it's time to go ahead and get our boogie on and start this party. That's how we do it here. Rod T Media. Coach, thank you so much once again. All right, looking forward to it. Hey, Coach, keep a level head, Coach. <laughs>